All right, so today we are talking about charge air coolers. And what I want to show you guys is when your turbocharger compresses air and creates boost to send into the engine, it also heats that air up tremendously. And when air gets hot, it expands. So if I were to take the air coming from this turbo and send it directly into the intake manifold, that air would be so hot entering the combustion chamber that the oxygen content would be greatly reduced. And oxygen, of course, is a key component to combustion. So in order to keep the boost pressure that we want to pack the cylinder full of air, but still have the oxygen rich air, we have to cool the air down after it's been pressurized. And that's where a charge air cooler comes in. So you look at this turbo and we follow it, you can see the tubing comes up here to this guy right here. So if I come around to the front, we can see that you know, you have your radiator, and if this was in a truck with a con air conditioning, there'd be condensers. And, but then this one right up here, the top piece, is the charged air cooler. And on some engines, if we look at this one, that charged air cooler is that big silver thing in front of the radiator. So that's usually where they're located, up at the top of the radiator, below the radiator, or right in front of the radiator are the most common places. So if we come back around to this side, we see that coming out of the charge air cooler that the piping goes into the intake manifold, right? So the reason we use the charge air cooler is to increase air density, right? That's the key purpose, so that there's more oxygen in that air when it gets to the cylinder. All right, so if you look here, you can see we got a couple of charge air coolers uh, sitting on this table here. And then attached to these charge air coolers, we have plugs in the hosing. So here you can see one that's just got a valve on it. And then over here is one that's got a, uh, a air connector on it for us to pressure test them. So what we do is if we suspect that we have a leak in the charge air cooler, we can hook an air hose with a regulator, of course, up to this side. And then we can make sure that that valve is closed and we're gonna put about 30 PSI of air pressure in it. And then we watch it for about 15 seconds. These are not designed to be completely leak free, so they have a leakage specification that is usually, depending on the OEM, somewhere between five and seven PSI allowable loss. So if I put 30 in it and after 15 seconds, I still had 28 PSI, I would say that that's a good charge air cooler that's not leaking. Um, so, that's how we uh, test these charge air coolers in the shop, is we'll do a pressure test like that. And you can see, of course, that these guys have safety chains. If the clamp holding that cap on here wasn't very tight, 30 PSI doesn't sound like a lot, but if this guy decided to pop out of there, it could do some serious damage. So for safety reasons, when you do this test, you always wanna make sure that one of these clamps is attached to something that's gonna keep that thing from flying too far. So now we have the test equipment hooked up to the cap. So you can see I'm using a regulator right here. We got a pressure gauge so that we can read it. And then you got the valve. So anytime, of course, when you initially hook it up, you want uh, this valve to be closed. So I already made sure though that this was backed all the way out to zero PSI. And then I open this up and then you use the regulator to increase to your 30 PSI. All right, so at 31 is okay. So I shut this guy off, right? And we can see it's already dropped to 25, going down to 20. Uh, so that would be an indicator of a bad one. Of course, mine's leaking because the connector here needs to be replaced, which I'll take care of later. But if you were testing one that had good connections and it leaked down that fast after you supplied the 30 PSI, that's how you would know you have a leak in that charge air cooler and know to replace it. I will tell you, however, that one of the reasons why we like to run the test on the end of the original hoses that are on the truck 
is that these expansion bands that are on these hoses, these hoses are not intended to be like a long-term piece. They're, they're considered expendable. The items that wear out need to be replaced commonly or frequently. So when you're testing it like this and you use the original hose, not only are you testing the charged air cooler, but you'll also find out if you have any kind of leaks around this guy and if it needs to be replaced. Um, general rule of thumb though, I usually do is that replace these whenever they come in for this kind of work anyway, but um, you can test these at the same time.